Hey everyone, Brian and Kevin coming to you from Storage Review and we've got a, another review today. This is the Corsair MP400. It's been ages since we've looked at a Corsair product. Yeah, and this one is pretty special. It's a uh, large capacity QLC product. Right, so they're, they launched with one, two, and four terabyte capacity. I know on the website now they've got the eight terabyte capacity with a little bit of lead time for fulfillment. But eight terabytes on an M.2 NVMe board is pretty unique. There's not much of that in the space. Yeah, it's it's special. I mean, you look at a lot of these drives and the big, uh, you still run into the issue of, well, do I go for a smaller high performance drive, a large uh, capacity drive? So I mean, it's, it's starting to bridge that gap between uh, an M.2 form factor product that can uh, get in the capacity range that anyone can really use. Yeah, and Corsair for their brand, I mean, they're gaming oriented. Everything's got the, the lights and the fans and, and the excitement around that, yeah. uh, that family of products. And I think for their customers, specifically if you're a creative pro, if you're a gamer, if you're you know, into those types of use cases, having a high capacity drive to hang on to your game installs, for instance, or ISOs or whatever is, yeah. a, is a good use case while maintaining a higher performance uh, NVMe SSD for your active files, active games, active entertainment is, is probably a good way to go. So we're seeing plenty of use cases where these dueling drives make a lot of sense in t inside uh, even notebooks at this point that have uh, multiple bays for M.2 connectivity. Let's go ahead and take a look at, uh, at what we've got here on the specs. So if we drop into it, they break out the specs individually for each drive. We reviewed the two terabyte capacity um, for a PCIe Gen 3 drive, these are pretty standard issue numbers in terms of specs. Anything stand out to you here, Kevin? No, I mean, these you're going to get these values, and it is still important to mention that uh, as a QLC product, testing and getting those numbers is a little bit different than on a TLC device where you have to be very careful of not moving outside the, the sweet spot of the QLC uh, uh, NAND. So and that's not that you have to test it in a certain um, uh, certain location, but it's more of you need to make sure that you're testing a smaller condensed size because as soon as you move outside, outside of some of its dynamic SLC cache, you'll start to hit a massive right cliff. Okay. And the other thing that's not noticed or noted on here, I think, is the warranty. They've got a five year on this guy, so that's nice to see in a, in a uh, QLC product. Yeah. So as we take a look here, why don't you explain this chart to the viewers, Kevin, how the MP400 compares to an elephant? Um, is this our chart? No, this is not <laughs> one of our charts. And the first time I saw this, I was a little bit confused because I i mean, I usually don't think of uh, electronic devices in the spans of hundreds of years, but uh, I mean, they do have a point. The math does work out, but uh, I'm not really sure that is gonna play out long term for the, uh, I'm not sure who keeps a computer around for 100 years. All right, point being though, is that we often get wrapped up sometimes in, in spec sheets, and this is saying if you're an average user, average workloads, it's going to last a very long time, and don't worry about the uh, the endurance rating on the drive. Yeah, although up to uh, the 1400 terabytes written, I'm pretty sure that it's probably for a higher capacity model because that is not what the two terabyte drives. Right, that's a, that may be the uh, the four or perhaps the eight. Anyway, what we can learn though is that because the MP400 bar is in yellow and the largest, that it is better than humans and elephants. Yes, it okay. is the elephant dominator of okay. drives. All right, carry on then. Oh, I put this picture, and this is an important one, not for any reason other than to burn another thirty seconds because the guy that commented on our uh, WD Black SN review this morning that said our videos are too long. I put this in specifically for that guy to burn another 30 seconds. Actually, I mean, th this particular picture does bring up a, an interesting point. In, in addition to me just passively, aggressively angering that guy? Well, yeah, I mean, the drive is a, uh, uh, it's not a single side drive, it's a dual side drive. Right. And a part that, why that doesn't really matter, a lot of these devices are going to be going into uh, desktops onto onboard slots. Sure. Or uh, larger uh, notebooks now, I mean, there might be certain ultra form, uh, like ultra small form factor devices that might use them, but a lot of these ca uh, use cases, it's going to be sitting off the motherboard in a dual sided or single side drive. It doesn't matter because there's plenty of space. Well, and none of those ultra thin notebooks are going to have the um, 
a GPU in it. No one's going to be gaming or doing heavy design work on those. Yeah. And most people aren't going to justify having a dual drive set up. I mean, you could use this as a primary drive, there's no doubt. Uh, but in terms of uh, the ideal use case is that this is a little more of a capacity product to supplement your high performance. Yeah. Just like in the old days when we had a a fast drive. I was going to say a nice fast 7200 RPM drive exactly. and a slower 5 Well, drive. we had Velociraptors, we had all sorts of, uh, of fun products and then into the hybrids and then into the early flash drives, but those capacities were so small that you had to have a big fat hard drive behind it if you were going to have any reasonable uh, storage in your system at all. And that was way before cloud was so easy to integrate straight into your uh, file explorer or finder on a Mac. Yeah, and my personal desktop still has roughly 100 gig of uh, stuff on it. I'm not really sure um, how, I, I still come back to what some people put on their uh, devices that oh, gosh. they reach into that uh, realm of needing two, four and eight terabytes. That's a but, different problem. And yes. well, you know, I would say, you know, Vince, our creative guy, he probably saves all that stuff locally in addition to a copy on the NAS, in addition True. to a copy in the cloud, in addition to whatever Tons else. Tons of videos. Going. That's usually what it comes down to. Yes. All right. Let's dive into performance on this guy. So one interesting area that uh, this came, uh, that this device worked for, um, our uh, test dev SQL Server uh, workload. And why it's important, most of the QLC devices we test with a 1% uh, partition size versus 5% on other uh, TLC-based products. And because, that's, that's to protect the drive from itself, right? Yeah, you, uh, you leverage too much of the drive and performance just falls off a cliff. And I think uh, one sweet spot on the two terabyte and larger drives is it's finally able to run this particular test without getting crushed. So this guy came in at around uh, nine milliseconds there. And what's kind of cool about that is that falls middle of the pack in the other uh, TLC-based products. So it actually performs pretty well in that regard. Yeah, it's strong for a QLC drive. Yeah. So on to our other synthetic tests, and it's important to keep in mind that while SQL Server compared against other existing tests in the same type of uh, benchmarking form, our synthetic tests really need to be compared against QLC devices only. Mm -hmm. But with that in mind, the uh, Corsair really blows the competition away from the existing QLC devices we've tested. And these are just the NVMe, of course, if we included the SATA QLC drives as well, it would be you know, even more lines on the far left end. Yeah, I mean, the, it, the charts on the SATA side do get a little bit sad, but it is, it's important to keep in mind that a lot of these devices really need to be only compared against other similar devices. So we can't do a direct line comparison to TLC-based drives, but the latency profile on this and the throughput is really pretty impressive. When you're using you know, its intended applications, it's still a high performance, uh, it's a very high performance drive. You're able to get up, up to around three gig a second. If you're looking at um, it's storing your uh, ISOs or videos or whatever, I mean, you're able to draw that data off very fast. All right, what else you got? So on the uh, random read side, uh, it comes kind of middle of the pack compared to the other devices, still tops at around uh, 350,000 IOPS. Which, well, look at that, it gives the, the P1 a little smooch right at the end there. Yes, uh, but it, it compares uh, pretty likewise to other uh, devices in this space. All right. Next up on the uh, sequential right, it was able to offer the lowest latency and the longest, no uh, the biggest number on uh, sequential right bandwidth. And right at the end, we start seeing a little bit of the um, uh, the sporadic uh, QLC performance, but that's to be expected given how these drives operate. And then uh, we wrap it up with our uh, random 4K write, which comes right around 300,000 IOPS. Okay, so overall good performance profile out of a drive, and it's really neat to see the QLC drives maturing the way they are because it probably isn't that long from now where that'll be the primary NAND selected for all client drives. Yeah, and we're starting to see that big, uh, more on the enterprise side now, and it's really moving out from the niche product into more of a mainstream offering. But as important as the drive is in its performance profile, as we've been noting in our recent uh, client SSD reviews, it's the software tools that are really important too to help the overall ownership experience differentiate between this and any other product in the space. So what we're gonna do is uh, is drop this into a sled, put it in the, uh, the PC system and fire up the Corsair tools to give you an overview of what that looks like. So we've installed the Corsair SSD toolbox, which was a bit of an adventure, quite literally. 
Yeah, Pirate Adventure. You went to the blog that mentioned the uh, download for the toolbox, and it hit a, a little animated, uh, I think it was a little pirate little guy. little 8-bit pirate video. Yeah. So we found the toolbox elsewhere, and this is uh, bringing back some memories. They launched this thing, I think, about seven years ago, and it looks about the same from what I recall, including the legendary toolbox. What's in that little thing? Can you make those out? Um, the front one appears to, I mean, on the side, I think that's a Force GT, and then there's nice. the Neutron Drive. And Those were classics back in the day. Yeah, I mean, that's back when Sand Force ruled the world. Oh, my gosh. All right, so let, we won't spend a whole lot of time here. Point being is that this tool hasn't been updated. Corsair, you know, perhaps they're working on it. I don't really know. This thing is, is pretty close to trash. Will this but even update I mean, the firmware? Uh, I mean, it, it's able to uh, see that it's the newest firmware. I'm not no, really sure. It might just be start. that it's not able to download one, so it says it's the newest. But, I mean, really, a lot of the toolboxes... Um, Wait, you're going to give this thing a silver lining? No. My, <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I'm not sure a lot of the toolboxes have a, a, a strong place in the modern world. Back when you had to do firmware updates constantly, there was it was a bigger deal to have a toolbox because you'd be pushing your firmware out onto yeah, it. Yeah, but we just looked at the WD one that has power management modes for gaming. It's got wear leveling. It's got firmware. It's got lights. It's got all sorts of stuff. Okay, well this drive doesn't have any lights. The um, I think the power management uh, capability on the uh, WD was just disabling low power modes. Okay, well it's something firmware update. All right. Yeah. Anyway, this, this software is not good. The drive, however, is the redeeming quality and the important part. And if you want nice drive tools, look at Samsung, look at WD. There's a couple others that are nice. This one's not, but the performance is good. Well, you can, I mean, if you want to pull drive information, Crystal Disk Info, and you can see your endurance, you can see all those specs that you can find on this app. So it's, if you want something that's more drive agnostic, it's out uh, there. For crying out loud. The tool could be better. Yes. It's seven years old, and like a Kentucky it waterfall, it did not age well. It didn't light the drive on fire, so there's that. True. Anyway, but the drive is good. The performance is good. It's one of the best QLC drives. If, is it the best we've reviewed so far, would you say? Reviewed so far. Reviewed so far. We do have some stuff in the hopper, uh, but really strong. So if you're looking for a high-capacity drive with reasonable performance, this guy's available up to eight terabytes. It's a good drive and worth considering for your rig, especially if you're a Corsair loyalist, which there are plenty of in this uh, uh, modern age of, of gaming and, and pro studio setups. For now, that's our review. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.